on ABC 22 News. At this place in history, we're on Route 22A in Orwell with Steve Perkins, the executive director of the Vermont Historical Society. Steve, what brings us here this week? Well, Mike, we are on the site of the uh, Mount Independence Military Road, which connected Mount Independence on down through um, Hubberton. And so we're going to head over to the Mount, as they yep. call it, which is a state historic site managed by uh, the Vermont Division for Historic Preservation. Okay, Mike, since we're in a new location uh, along the trails now, why don't you help uh, reorient us by giving us a little bit of guidance as to uh, what we can see surrounding us and which direction we're facing. So this is what we call the Overlook Point on the Baldwin Trail. And that way is south to Skeensboro. Yep. That way is north to Ticonderoga, Crown Point, and Canada. It's the summer of 1777. Seven, yeah. And there's a British army under General oh, Burgoyne yeah. coming, coming down, down the lake. lake. Yeah. Some say as many as 20,000 coming yeah. down the lake. Can you imagine that late June, early July of 1777, you're here and you start to hear chopping and <laughs> digging noises across the lake. And you see that there's cannons on top of the hill aimed in this direction. The British had taken an um, built a battery and placed cannons on the top of Mount Defiance. The British could not only fire in this direction, but they could also see everything that was going on here. The entire mountain was bare. There were no trees here. There were no trees for miles around here because of firewood needs. This was considered the Gibraltar of New England. General St. Clair made the decision that he didn't have enough men to support holding this ground. It would take eight to 10,000 men to actually man Ticonderoga in here, and he had 2,500 or so available, because a lot of them have been shipped down to help General Washington. So they very quietly abandoned these works. Um, the only problem was there was a French officer who set fire to his cabin, which lit up the entire mountain. Yeah. The British were able to figure out what was going on and um, thereby mobilized their troops mm -hmm. to come across the bridge, which was still intact, right. and take them out. Very close to where we're standing right now, that bridge, in fact. The bridge was, it was down over there. Burgoyne's army lost at the battles of Saratoga, and not that it ended hostilities, but it shut down the, the clash of large armies. Most of the American families along Lake Champlain actually abandoned their farms when the British came down. So Mike, how can people visit this site today? In the fall, winter, and spring when we're closed down, the trails are still open yeah. and the interpretive signs are here. So you can walk the trails and you can soak in the history, especially when the leaves are off the trees. Yeah. We always leave brochures on the front door yeah. with a trail map and numbers that you can use to find your way. And during the spring and summer, the museum is here and there's reenactments and all sorts of stuff there going is, on. There is, yes. Retreating from the Gibraltar of New England at this place in history. Local news that matters.